Now let's talk about our target language, Lambda.js. And this is the language that I'm going to include a, an interpreter in your homework 8. And this interpreter comes from the paper, The Essence of JavaScript. So Lambda.js, you can think of it as Racket without defines, without macros, and with two new features, which is objects and an explicit heap. So in the previous homework assignments, we've been looking at using a heap in a hidden fashion, right? Where you, you use it via defines. But now in this language, Lambda.js, the heap is a first, con a first class construct. So you can allocate something in a heap and you can as assign something to the heap. So as you might imagine, alloc is going to be equivalent to heap alloc and this rule will be equivalent to the heap put. And then these three rules are the object operations that we talked about before in our previous lesson where you have a way to construct objects, which is this rule right here. You have a way to read a field from an object, which is this um, constructor right here. And the third one is updating, immutable updating of an object. And the way you can think of this is this instruction corresponds to hash set, this instruction corresponds to hash ref, and this corresponds to creating a hash table. Right? Modulo. One thing you have to keep in mind is that reading, it's not just heat hash ref because you have to go through, you have to do the lookup like we do in environments. So you have these three operations, and the, the key point is that objects in Lambda.js are immutable, although in JavaScript they're not. And that's basically it. So let's look at the how we represent the formalism and how we represent the concrete syntax. So a Lambda, we write it with Lambda as you would expect. A function application, we call it as usual. And then an object declaration, we use the following syntax. We have object and then pairs of things and each pair key value where the key is a string. And then to read an object, a field from an object, you use the function call get field. And the first argument is the object and the second one is the string. To allocate, you just say alloc and then you pass whatever object you want to, to store in the heap. And then you can assign something to the heap. In this case, I'm assigning an empty object. So I can do set and that performs the assignment in the heap where X is a handle. Right, and object here is just anything. It could be a number. It could be whatever you want. In this example, we're doing an assignment, and then we're reading the value from x. So we just do begin set to assign, and then followed by the second thing. So as I mentioned before, begin allows us to sequence multiple uh, commands. Not so in homework five, we we had that operator called seek sec s u q, and that would allow you to sequ sequence two expressions. So begin is the generalization of that where you can you can sequence an, any number of expressions. Finally, you have the let and the let operator assigns the evaluation of the expression on the right hand side to x and makes that x available in the in expression. So in this case, I'm declaring x assigning it 10 and making that visible in this context. So that's why here x is 10. So this is, I will show you this notation and that's how you write it in uh, Lambda.js. One last thing, and this is just a note, in Racket, and this you will see in your uh, tests, because now you're interfacing with someone's interpreter they use box to represent a memory cell. And in fact, Racket allows you to, what we learned, the, the, that notion of, of heap allocation, all that, that's all available via the box API. So whenever you do box and an expression, what that does, it creates, it allocates in the heap, in the Racket's heap, uh, a new reference, assigning it to the expression that you give it. 
Um, and then when you want to update, when you want to do a put in the heap in Racket, the way you can do this is with set box and exclamation mark. Okay, I think we covered all of this. So in our net, now what I want to do is a small overview of the translation process, and then we're going to do a video for each translation step independently. But in this video, I just wanted to do a small overview. So the basic intuition is in Simple.js, an object is represented, and this is a, it's very important that you understand the overview, and these are the underlying assumptions. So the basic idea is that objects, the way they're represented in JavaScript, you always have a reference to an internal representation of an object. So in Simple.js, what we're gonna have is object, again, immutable, but is gonna be stored in a mutable heap. So what is the actual JavaScript object? It's going to be a reference to an immutable object. Okay, and then a simple JS function is going to be two things, right? It's going to be a lambda. It's basically going to be a function in JavaScript. I mentioned that a, a function in JavaScript represents an object. So in how do you represent that using simple JS? Well, you, you create this object that has two fields, a placeholder for the code and the placeholder for, for the prototype. This is the function uh, that you write when you do function. Okay. So what I'm writing in point two is how do I represent a function? And what I'm saying is that a function is going to be represented with an object that has two fields. One is going to be the code. Uh, and this is where you're going to store the the actual code, and then the other the next thing is going to be the prototype, which is going to be um, another a reference to another object. Okay. And then creating with new will take you. You need to have as as we saw before. We need to do those three things, right? Whenever we do new and we call something that takes a function and we say, okay, like where F is the constructor function, right? And then here will be the parameters, right? So it could be like we example that we wrote was new shape one and 10 or whatever. Um, so the first thing, the first value has to be an object that ha that contains the code and contains the prototype. And that's gonna be used to initialize whatever instance is created and passed to the code that is defined in shape but we're going to see that in detail but basically as we saw before new is doing three things right it's allocating this object it's uh, calling the code to initialize it but it is also setting the prototype of that object instance those are the three things that we looked at and then method invocation which is what we're going to cover has to be careful and convert something that is f dot um, you know f dot like some method uh, we saw translation right so we did translation and let's say I did a translation of 0 10 um, and that needs to be converted into f dot the special field code right because every object to get the actual code you have to do f field code and then you have to pass the this so that's going to be f and then you pass zero, and then you pass 10. So, so you kind of have to, to look up the object representation. You have, because this is a function, you have to, sorry, because this is a, actually you have to do f dot translation dot code. Okay, so you have to look up the field, and then in that field you have, it's gonna be a function. So because it's a function, you have to look up the code, and then you have to provide the f, and then you have to provide the various parameters. So this is just to say that this code will translate into that. And I'm going to give you a few examples in the overview to make this a bit more explicit. And it will be completely clear, I hope, when I create a video per thing. So this is more to give you an overview. So again, what we need to be... The ma major concerns of translation are, of course, reference handling. Uh, so we need to make memory manipulation explicit. That is to say, we need to allocate objects. We need to re dereference. We need to reference objects to look up things. Um, we need to 
make the this explicit of objects. So whenever you call a method and whenever you uh, call a function, that needs to have the this explicit. Um, to recall that functions in the translation, so in JavaScript, functions are objects, but in, but in SimpleJS, as we've learned, um, SimpleJS just has a notion of simple lambdas, plain lambdas, and objects that are separated. So we need to combine all of them, right? We need to convert something that assumes that a, a function is an object and make that in translate that notion into simple JS, which does not have uh, functions are functions and objects are objects. And then, of course, in simple JS, there is no notion of method call, right? You didn't see any method call here. Uh, we need to be able to translate what is a method in terms of calling a function in, in Lambda JS and looking up some field in, in Lambda JS. Okay, and we're going to see. So th those are basically the four points. Like this doesn't exist. There's no notion of this here, right? So we need to make that explicit and all that. So let's look at a few examples of code and see what they generate. Um, so if I, if I were to create this function shape, the idea is that I need to generate, first I need to represent this function as something like this, which is to say a function, a JavaScript function, is generating an object here. Do you see the, the, the brackets? That has two fields, one for code, where I'm going to actually store the actual code being run. And notice that there is no this, so we need to make the first parameter to be the this, right? And we actually, that was the whole point of the, the way we, the examples I gave you to kind of see, to simplify how, what was shape in like a simpler terms. That was basically what we are going to do in translation function in a simpler form. So the first thing is really to make the distinction, right? In in JavaScript, J functions are objects, so we make that distinction, make it explicit. Functions are functions and objects are objects. So we kind of split it down. So because a function is an object, then the shape is an object, and then the code is somewhere. It's going to be a field of that object, okay? And this is a special field code that we cannot access via JavaScript. It's just some translation artifact. And then we need to make memory references explicit, and that is via alloc. So whenever we create an object, we kind of have to store it in the, in the heap if we want to be able to manipulate it. So we're going to have to prefix every object creation, right? Here we're creating an object. So we need to allocate it in the heap, store it in a heap. And here as well, there's there's an object being created. We need to prefix this with alloc. So then this code that is here, syntactic sugar for this. There's another another very important thing, which is you see here is an assignment. Um, let me kind of go through the code because we saw this part. I hope you understand the high level view the reason for us having to put the alloc here. So we need to put an alloc here because we're allocating this object, allocating this object so that deserves another alloc. And then let's now delve into this piece of code. And in this piece of code, we see that we have an assignment, right? And here we're reading a value from, this is this is a reference, right? That's how we interpret it in, in, in JavaScript. So how does that relate in into a simpler form that is Lambda.js? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to deref this, and that is just to look up. So this, aka object, is going to be the reference to the object, right? So we need to look up in the heap, get the actual object from the heap, and that is done in the highlighted thing in blue. And then what we need to do, object.x, so we need to do an assignment equals something, right? So this is an assignment, and we've learned that an assignment is done with this notation, which means updating. So this whole thing means that we're updating, we're storing x to the field um, this.x, right? So we're doing that. But the result, as we've learned as well, objects in Lambda.js are immutable. So if they are immutable, we need to propagate the changes. So we need to assign it 
to this. So we need to update the reference. And now this is, is a put, and this is another put. Okay. So we need to assign the new this, kind of like what we did whenever we change the environment, we need to store the new memory. So we kind of have to do that as well. So now let's look at new. And what new has to do is whenever you see this line of code, what do we have to do? We have to look up the prototype of the constructor, right? So shape.prototype. We need to create that empty object that is setting to underscore underscore proto. So that is just to say that we have to create the new object and set its proto field to be the one that is in shape. So that's what JavaScript is doing underneath. And then what we need to do, we need to look up the code of that function, right? As we mentioned before, in JavaScript, in JavaScript objects are functions, but in Lambda.js they are not. So the outermost thing is an object. And then we need to look up the code that we assign it. So this relates to how we store an object in memory, right? A function in memory. And then we need to make, so this is without memory consideration, but now if you want to make memory explicit, we need to, we are creating an object, we need to allocate it. So P1 now holds a reference to an object and now it's clear. So if I want to read the contents of a reference, I need to do DREF, right? And then that returns an object. So then I want to look up the code. I do it like before and calling a function is the same. So I only, basically, whenever I want to read from an, a reference, like here, I'm reading from a reference, I need to do ref. Whenever I'm creating an object, I need to do a lock. So that's why it's there. Okay, so similar here. Shape.prototypes, you have to do ref and then look up the field. Okay. So now let's look at method invocation. So p1.translate, what is that actually doing? It's going to be doing what? We're going to look up the method from the object. So p1.translate, we are just looking up that. And then, as we know, that's going to be a function, right? So if it's a function, a JavaScript function, we need to look up the code. And we do that by doing m dollar sign code. And then we are calling p1.translate. So we have to pass the this explicitly. There is no this in, in Lambda.js, so we have to pass it explicitly. That's what we're doing. Now let's make heap operations explicit. Okay, so what did we say? We said that whenever we're reading something from a reference, P1 is a reference, we have to deref it. So here as well, M is going to be a reference to a function, so we need to dereference that as well. And here I even wrote the code that you would expect to be generated if you print it out. So in, in simple JS. But formally, it's kind of smaller. So that's why I always show the, the formal version. Okay, and finally, a whole piece of code. And I think that's the last slide. Yeah, it is. So a whole piece of code, let's go through it uh, step by step. So this is just so you have a full. If you were to write these three lines of code or four lines of code, where we are defining a prototype, um, a new method, to a method translate, and then we're creating an instance of translate, and finally we're calling a method. What that would amount to is doing the following again, now with the lock explicit, the dereps, and this is just the copying the code that I just showed you, just to see that all these very four very simple lines kind of generate a lot of code. Right, that's what you're doing. Okay, so in the next two videos, I'm going to cover each constructor by itself. So I hope you enjoy.